Welcome back, everyone. Today we are talking about the correct behavior of reinforced concrete beams. To begin, let's review our three stages of flexural behavior for a concrete beam. Here we have a beam and the bottom is going to be in tension, the top is in compression, and as I increase my load, I start out with an uncracked section. Now that will continue until I reach M cracking. And if you're interested in that section particularly and how to calculate M cracked, please see the previous video on this topic. Now in this video, we're specifically interested in what's happening in the cracked region right here. So that is between moments of M cracked up to the moment MY, which is my yield moment. After I hit the yield moment, then everything goes sideways here and then we'll calculate our flexural moment capacity. But that's the topic for the next video, so stay tuned for that. For now, let's look at our cracked moment of inertia and how we analyze that cracked section. To begin, we need to look at our extent of cracking. So here I have a beam, and I'm going to ex assume the extent of cracking is some depth here, which is a distance C from my top surface. Now, all the section below here is going to be cracked concrete. And one of the assumptions I'm going to make for that is my concrete that's cracked holds zero stress in tension. So there's no stress there, which means that part of my section is effectively gone. It's not really helping me. However, I still do have the steel, so I need to consider that and I need to transform it, which basically means to convert it to an equivalent area of concrete. So to transform that, I need to take N, that's the ratio of the steel modulus to the concrete modulus, multiplied by A sub S, which is the area of steel, to get some equivalent area. So what remains of my section? I have a rectangle up here on top, which is my concrete in compression. It has a width of B, and it has a depth C. And then I have a second section down here for my transformed steel area, and that has an area of N times A S. Now the distance down to that section is D minus C, where D is the total depth from the top of my section all the way down to my steel, and I'm subtracting off distance C. Now in this diagram, by definition, this line is my neutral axis. So anything above that line is in compression, anything below it is in tension, and because it's all intention, therefore I neglected all the concrete down here. So now let's go ahead and find that distance C. So if I want to find C, I need to balance out the area above the neutral axis with the area below the neutral axis. So above the neutral axis, I have B times C as the area, and I need to consider its moment about the neutral axis, which is a distance of one half of C from the neutral axis. And then I need to consider my area of the transformed steel, which is N times AS, and its distance from the neutral axis, which is D minus C. Now this is a quadratic equation, and we're not going to go through the algebra of solving that. Rather than that, I'll just show you the result. We'll find that from this, C is equal to negative N times AS plus the square root of n times a s quantity squared plus two n a s b d all divided by b so you can see this has the similar form that we recognize from a quadratic equation however there's no plus or minus here the reason for that is if you put the minus in you would find that c is a negative number and that's never going to happen so we're only going to look at this one single solution now that I have my depth to neutral axis, i.e. my extent of cracking, I can find my cracked moment of inertia, I sub C R. Now there's two regions for this. There is a rectangle and then there is an area down here that's a distance D minus C away from my centroid. And so if I calculate I cracked, we have two separate areas. The first area, normally when we see rectangles, we think 1 12th B H cubed, where H is the height of your second section. However, here we're bending it about the neutral axis. So we're bending it about the edge. So for this type of rectangle, it is one third base times height cubed. And my height of that rectangle is C cubed. Then I need to consider my second section down here. And that is simply an area N times a S transferred over to the neutral axis. So that's a distance of D minus C and that quantity has to be squared. And that equation will give me the cracked 
moment of inertia for a rectangular concrete beam. So let's take that result and we'll consider an example problem where we'll calculate this cracked moment of inertia, the yielding moment, and the curvature at yield. So here's our section, and if you've seen the previous video on the cracking moment, this is the same section, so we can do a little bit of compare and contrast with that. Here I have a normal weight concrete section of strength 5,000 PSI, grade 60 steel. It's a 16 inch by 26 inch section, and the steel is 23 and a half inches down from the top. I have three number nine bars, which ends up being an area of steel of 3.0 inches squared. So the first thing that we have to do is we need to calculate our section properties. So I'll just say step one here is properties. And for example, I need a concrete modulus, and that's going to be 57,000 times the square root of F prime C. All in PSI, if I plug in 5,000 PSI, I'll find that this is 4,030,000 PSI. I then also need to calculate my ratio N, which is E sub S divided by E sub C. The modulus for the steel is always the same. It's 29,000 KSI. And my modulus for my concrete is 4,030 KSI. So that's the result I got before, but just turning my PSI to KSI for convenience. Dividing that out, this ratio is 7.2. And I also need N times AS. And of course, being 7.2, AS being three inches squared. So this is 21.6 inches squared. Now, step two is to find my depth to neutral axis C. And this is given by that long quadratic equation, negative N times NS plus the square root of NAS squared plus two NASBD, all divided by B. So I know all these quantities, it's just a matter of plugging in my values. So here we have C is equal to negative 21.6 inches squared for N times AS, plus the square root of 21.6 square inches, that quantity squared, plus two times 21.6 square inches, multiplied by 16 inches and 23 and a half inches. And then I'm going to divide all of this by 16 inches. And that result is going to give me 6.73 inches down from my top surface. So that is the extent of my cracking and that is equal to my neutral axis depth. So here, let's find my cracked moment of inertia. I have one third BC cubed plus NAS multiplied by the distance D minus C, that quantity squared. Now, just so we all remember, my neutral axis is right here and that's 6.73 inches down from the top surface. So that's distance C. So once again, I have all these quantities, so let's just plug in the values. I cracked is equal to one third times 16 inches multiplied by 6.73 inches cubed. And then plus I have 21.6 square inches multiplied by the distance D minus C. So that's 23.5 inches minus 6.73 inches quantity squared. So plugging in all these values, we get 7,696 inches to the fourth. Now, just as a comparison, if we look at our gross moment of inertia, which is the uncracked section behavior, we found that previously I gross was equal to 23,435 inches to the fourth. So typically your cracked moment of inertia for a beam is going to be 30 to 40% of your gross moment of inertia for typical sections. So that's an approximation, but it works pretty well. Now that I have my moment of inertia, I want to find my yield moment M sub Y. So to do this, we need to consider what that yield moment represents. So the yield moment represents the time when my steel yields. So therefore my stress in my steel FS is equal to FY. And we know that the stress in the steel for a linear section is N times the moment times the distance down to that steel, which I'll call Y sub S, and that's the distance measured from the neutral axis, not from the top of the section. And I'm going to divide this by my cracked moment of inertia, I crack. So solving that expression, we can find that the moment, which I'll call MY in this case, 
is equal to Fy times I cracked divided by N, and this distance Y sub S is the distance from the neutral axis down to the steel, so that's just distance D minus C that we've seen before. So this becomes D minus C, just like that. So let's plug in some numbers. My yield for my steel is 60,000 PSI, and my I cracked, cracked moment of inertia is 7,696 inches to the fourth. I just calculated that. N is 7.2. And the distance D minus C is 23.5 inches minus 6.73 inches. So calculating that all out, we get a moment of 3,826,000 pound inches. It's not a very convenient unit, so let's turn that into kip feet. So to turn it into kip feet, I'm going to say one kip foot is equal to 12,000 pound inches, and therefore this result is equal to 319 kip feet. Cool, that's a much more manageable number. Now, for those that are curious, and haven't looked at the previous video, or just don't wanna look at this moment, our cracking moment, for this section was a measly 89 kip feet. So from 89 to 319 kip feet, we have this cracked section behavior. Lastly, let's look at our curvature. Now the curvature is going to be equal to my moment my divided by the modulus E sub C and the cracked moment of inertia. So I once again have all these quantities, so it's just a matter of plugging them in. So my yield curvature, is equal to my yield moment, which is 3,826,000 pound inches. And that's going to be divided by my modulus of the concrete, which was 4,030,000 PSI and 7,696 inches to the fourth for my cracked moment of inertia. And therefore, this is equal to 123 times 10 to the negative sixth one per inch for that curvature. Now, once again, if we want to compare that to my curvature at cracking, that was about 10 to 12 times less. So if we look at our curvature at cracking, it was roughly equal to 10 times 10 to the negative sixth, one over inch. So a considerably smaller number. And that wraps up our discussion of cracked section properties, looking at the cracked moment of inertia, the yield moment, and the curvature at yielding. So stay tuned for our next video where we'll talk about what is the ultimate capacity of a reinforced concrete beam. I hope you learned something. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.